Hey, Quentin, I hope you are well. My name is Laura Victoria Ward, and I am here in a Zoom room with some other people from all over the world in inner outer space. Um, if you guys want to, if you want to just either in the chat or in your um, in your name, you could rename and just put where you are if that is. I feel like it's interesting for everyone to know where everybody else is since we have a few new people and we might have a few new people joining us. Um, so I'm actually going to do a lot of review of space and this is inner outer space. And what I like to do normally in class is do a lot of um, La Bonbartenia work with some continuum work. So the work of Emily Conrad, I am not a continuum teacher, but I have studied it for uh, eight years pretty intensively. So I use a lot of it in my work. Um, yeah. Oh, Zurich, France, Netherlands, Puerto Rico, Canada, Guelph, Ontario. <laughs> um, okay. So, and Baltimore and DC, between Baltimore and DC. So Quinton's on the East Coast, close, not so far from me, probably four hours away. Um, and I'm in upstate New York. I, to, to me, that idea of place grounds us in a sense. Like when I can also feel like there, there, there are people around the world that I've been in most of those countries. I've, in fact, I've been in all of the countries. Uh, Ah, yeah, I've been in, I've been in Zurich too. <laughs> I mean, not as a country, but I've been there in the airport and I went out. <laughs> so I feel like just the grounding of being in a place and having some kind of feeling, it, it gives us a little cultural grounding, right? So coming back into my process and what we're going to be doing, some of this is going to be talking back and sharing your opinion or your feeling or your experience of what happened. And then also just really inviting you to tune into yourself and what the experience of being in your body doing these types of things is. So we can start either standing or, sit or seated. I think Lindsay's on a ball. I am on a, my little Muffet Tuffet, my little Ottoman Roly. And let's start with rubbing our hands together. We're just going to come into the senses a little bit rubbing your hands together so you can feel some warmth between your hands. It's actually really cold here right now. It's what's snowing here today. So heating up, getting that energy in between your hands or heat. And we're just gonna place them on our eyes. So for a minute, taking the visual out of the situation and letting yourself feel into the, you can imagine into the shape of your eyeball, big round, ball that's very fluid. And as you're in your eyeball, maybe let your eye, your eyes move around a little bit. So maybe they're just with your eyes closed, shifting a little bit side to side, maybe shifting up down, maybe finding the diagonals or circling around in your head, circling one way, circling the other. And just seeing what it feels like to be in your body in a Zoom room when you take out the visual. How is that? Does it feel uncomfortable? If anything's uncomfortable, of course you cannot do it. That's always an option. So never feel like you have to do anything that I'm suggesting. It's always an invitation for exploration and, and inquiry. It's not a you must. And then letting your hands um, come to your ears. So let me say it first before so you can hear it. We're just going to have hands over our ears for a couple of breaths and just feel into that. You can do it with eyes open or closed. And then taking your hands down and I'm gonna cross them and just kind of go onto collarbone and, and upper trap. If that feels uncomfortable, don't do it, but just like little tiny hug, feeling into your body. And as you're in this position, think of any kind of internal movement. So any kind of micro movement that you can feel, either feeling it in your hands or in your body or sensing it, sensing it in any way that you sense movement coming into yourself with this position of, of crossing the front, crossing your arms. Just seeing where that takes you.
And then the last one, we're just gonna go one hand up on the top of the chest, the other hand down on your belly and feeling into that. And with our hands here, I'm just gonna stand up so you can see. I want you just to imagine that you're, that as you inhale, your whole body is growing like a big balloon. And as you exhale, the whole body is shrinking back into itself. So this idea of growing and shrinking with the breath. Big three-dimensional filling up and three-dimensional coming back into yourself. And if it feels like it takes a lot of effort, soften it so it's not effortful. Exhale more so you have space to inhale. See if it's possible to make it easy. Not difficult, just soft and easy. And then letting your hands fall away and just let's come back together and just see if anything popped up for you. And you can unmute to say whatever you noticed, if anything came up for you. But um, if you noticed anything like in, for, I'll just say for me, like when I was in this crossed space, suddenly I felt into my back space so much more and it softened and slowed me down. Like I could feel my nervous system just dropping down. So in this particular one, so that's, Anybody else notice anything in any of those places? Yeah, go ahead, Peen. Yeah, in in the same for me, it was uh, uh, my hands. The warmth of my hands was inviting more movement in in my lungs to expand the inhaling. Nice. I'm feeling um like a warm rocking sensation in my this area. I was yesterday. I was working on releasing this and so I feel like something's vibrating in this area especially when I hug it like this and give it a little bit of warmth so it was interesting anyone else go ahead Angel yeah in, in the eyes that was pretty like coming really down I've been reading a lot today and seeing a lot of videos. So that was like, oof, I could come down to my body with ease. I just found the last position really calming and settling for me. Just really slowed everything down. Nice. All right, let's go on. Let's keep moving. So we're going to play with, um, I feel like we've come in for a landing into our bodies. And I think that's usually like how I like to start by just some kind of entrance where we, we get in, but now we're going to move a little bit more, a little bit bigger um, or a lot bigger, depending on how it is for you. So I'm going to stand up. And invite you to stand up. If you feel like sitting is going to be more beneficial for you today, by all means, go for it. But I just want to play with the vertical dimension. So I feel like we came into our inner space in that exercise, and now we're going to move into the outer space. So we're just playing with up and down. Or we can also play with upper body to lower body, upper, upper versus lower movement, where we're reaching and then we're coming down, or we could be growing up, lengthening and then shortening, shrinking down, just feeling the up and downness of possibility in whatever way feels interesting. It could be with one side, it could be with both sides, or it could be the sense of counter tension and opposition. So we're finding the vertical place high to place low. And we can also look at each other on the screen for, for information. Like, do you wanna try this in a different way? Is your way the only way? or what are the other people, but really trying to keep it just in vertical. So we're taking out the side side, we're taking out as much forward backward as possible, and we're just staying in up and down. Vertical dimension, upness and downness. And maybe let's take this until we feel like, oh God, do we really have to keep going up down anymore? So let yourself up down a bit more until it actually starts to become maybe 
uncomfortable, like, oh, I really don't want to be in this up down anymore. Or maybe it feels good and it's that you're never going to be out of the, I, I love vertical, I love it up and down. But starting to notice if you get to a point where you want to shift it, whenever you feel like you've reached your, I'm sick of up down, go ahead and start to add different movement. So as soon as you feel like I'm over it, uh, yeah, feel free to add stuff. Yeah, Lindsay and Angel have, have gone for it. Yes, and yeah, Lindsay's has become really shaping and Angel's getting the side side. So let's start to actually just move into side side. So one side to the other side, horizontal side to side. We can cross, we can open or just reach, feeling what the side-sideness in our body is. Nice, nice. You got those turns going on there, which is really fun. So maybe you wanna try some of those turns that I saw happening in Fleur's space. So horizontal, side-side. Can I go with both? both my whole body to one side, my whole body to the other side. How much side-sideness can I get? Trying to keep my hips and shoulders maybe front so that I know where my side-side is. And let's go into the next pattern. So that was where we have our three main, three dimensions, vertical, horizontal, and then sagittal forward, backward. So we're gonna play with sagittal. Just moving forwards and backwards. Yeah, and feeling what it feels like. Actually, we talked about this last week. Quinton brought it up last week, the idea of really moving into something that that could be confrontational or I'm backing away from something, taking up space, just feeling what it feels like, even with the screen. Is it fun and funny or is it confrontational? What is it? What happens with forward and backward? Reaching into what's before you, taking it back into the past. And we're gonna try and keep again our hips pointing front. So if I'm going back, if I turn my body, I've shifted the whole thing. So trying to keep hips. Good. All right, and now we're gonna expand this out. So I'm gonna give you this. So this is, this is from Laban Movement Analysis. And what we're gonna do is a basic scale of movement, which most people in this class actually already know. So just a couple of you are new. So don't worry if you don't get it right away. Like it's fine and it's sort of layering. And part of the reason the value of this work is it gives you a structure to learn movement on. So Fleur, I think you're already a dancer and do a lot of movement. So it should be super whatever. Um, Angel, I think you haven't done as much of this type of stuff. So don't feel like, oh my God, I need to get it. Just feel like, okay, I'm just letting my body go through these positions. And if it goes somewhere different, it's totally fine. No big deal. So we're going to make this scale of movement. We're going to go up to down, place high to place low. Let's just do that with one hand a couple of times. Place high to place low. This is the vertical dimension up and down. Then we're going to cross horizontal, crossing and opening, crossing and opening, side across and side open. Then we're gonna to go to sagittal. So I'm using my left arm. You guys could be using your right if you're mirroring me or it could be the other side, doesn't matter. Either way is fine, backwards and forwards. So sagittal dimension, right in front of you, right behind you. Reaching forward, trying to keep your hips facing front, hip bones facing forward, yes, and backwards. Then we're gonna do the whole thing with the other side. So other side reaching up and down, vertical, up and down, high and low, up and down, and then horizontal, crossing over, side across, side open, side across, side open, side across, side open, and then sagittal, backwards, forwards, right behind you and right in front. That's it. As if you're reaching from a point right behind you and you're moving in the most direct line to the point in front, taking it backwards, yes, and forwards, backwards and forwards, excellent. So that's the scale. 
We'll do it on one side and then we'll do it on the other. And then we're gonna reverse it also. But let me talk about it for one more second. So in movement analysis, there are scales of movement that take place in the um, crystalline forms. So here is a tetrahedron, also known as a platonic solid. So these are all platonic solids, tetrahedron. This is a cube. This is an octahedron. This is an icosahedron. And this is a dodecahedron. The dodecahedron, actually there are scales in it, but I don't know them. So in, in studying movement analysis, the ones that we use are these, these three platonic solids. So imagine that this is a structure that a scale of movement is moving within. So the scale we just did is moving inside of an octahedron. So the up down of these two points, the side side of these two points, and the forward backward of these two points. So just to give you another image of what's happening. So this is, this is the internal, a scale that's moving inside of this form. This form has eight faces and six points. This form has six faces and eight, eight points. And this form can fit outside. Like if I put this on the outside, each of these faces will be facing one of these. So it's like, there's this interesting interrelationship between these forms. And there's a scale of movement that moves through the cube as well and the icosahedron. So, so we're playing with right now, just single dimensions. And of course our bodies are three-dimensional. Like we are actually really moving three-dimensionally, not singly in single dimensions. So if I, oh, <laughs> popping in and out. If I, um, this language is for law bond movement analysis. So that this is just breaking it down into a language that we can, chew up in bite-sized pieces. So when I say I'm moving in the sagittal, it's just, it's not exactly perfectly, I am not three-dimensional, I am singly a dimension. It's, I am a three-dimensional body. This is for the language of, of blob on movement analysis, which is very helpful in sort of learning these forms and structures to, lay, to layer on other forms and structures. So let's go back to the actual scale itself of the octahedron, also known as the dimensional cross of axis. So I'm going to use my left hand. You can mirror me with your right if you want. So I'm going to do the whole scale together. I go place high and come down to place low. I go side to cross and then open it wide. And then taking it backwards and forwards. Yeah, place high, vertical, and place low side across and side open and then backwards and forwards. One more time, same thing, same side, vertical up, down, horizontal, cross, open, sagittal, backwards and forwards. And then switching it to the other side, vertical, place high, place low, Horizontal, side across, side open, sagittal, backwards and forwards. Same thing, up and down. That arm crosses over, crossing over, that's it. And opening wide. And then taking it backwards and forwards. And last time, vertical. Up, down, side across, side open, backwards and forwards. Good. So let's move that. We're gonna go out and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna add some different things. So the way that we've been doing it is we've been coming from our center, going to the periphery center to the edge, center to the edge. We've been coming through the center. We're gonna add some times where we actually travel along the periphery. So instead of coming always back into center, we're gonna have some peripheral movement as opposed to central movement. So we're going to go up, straight up, and then we're gonna take the peripheral pathway coming all the way down, reaching out to come down. We're gonna come in to center and we're gonna go across. 
crossing over, arm and leg cross. Then we're gonna sweep out, open, open, open. Keep opening all the way to the back. And then we're gonna come through the center and move forward. So moving forward, then we're gonna reverse this. So that hand is gonna come back through the center to the back. And we're gonna open wide. We're gonna keep opening to the front, move your legs as necessary. Oops, all the way to the cross. And then we're gonna go down and up. So we just retrograded. We went forward and we went back. And if you were just learning love on movement analysis, you wouldn't have the reverse. But just to make it more interesting and exciting, I'm giving you the reverse. We worked on it last week in this class also. Let's do that side again. Up, central movement. We're gonna sweep down along the periphery, reaching out and in. Coming up the middle, central movement, spoking out crossing over and then sweeping all the way around. Sweep like you're cleaning off a big table. We're gonna come through the center and straight forward. Then we're gonna take it back, straight back and open it out to the side. Keep opening it through the front till we cross. From there, we're gonna take it down to the floor, place low and place high. Good, now just take a little walk around your room or walk forward, backward, shift your weight side, side. Let, you just, let yourself just feel your body and feeling the how you've moved through space. And if the two sides feel different, the one that's been working more or the one that has, yeah. And it's interesting to see, <laughs> yeah. If you feel called to move in different ways, by all means, give your body the chance to like experience itself in, uh, improvised movement in whatever feels tasty and delicious. Like, oh, my body really wants to have some of this right now. My body really needs some of that. Yeah. I need some spinal movement. We've had a lot of sort of straight static body. Let's get it more alive. Head tail. Beautiful. Nice. Excellent. Okay. And now let's come back to the other side and just even that out. So we're going to go straight up. The vertical place high, we're gonna slice all the way down to place low. Coming into center, we're gonna cross arm and leg, crossing over, and then slicing, opening, 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 peripheral movement all the way to the back. And we're gonna come stabbing forward with some central movement. And then central movement coming back all the way to the back. Peripheral movement as we open, 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 open until we cross and then taking it down and up. Repeating that side one more time, slicing down into center, crossing over, opening, 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 all the way around to the back and then stabbing through, reversing it, taking it all the way back, sweeping out this big arc. Let your body move, let your legs move as necessary, crossing over, Take it down and sweep it up. Good. So we were playing with all of these really in, in movement analysis. Let's come in for a second. And I'm going to talk about sort of another layer. All of this stuff, what we're doing right now is in the space department of movement analysis. And in movement, in movement analysis, there are really four segments. One is the body level, what's happening, how's it happening? Where is it happening? Then there's the space level, which is like the geometric space level, like the vertical, the horizontal, the planes and the shapes, the crystalline forms. Then there's the effort level. And the effort is like the dynamics of the movement. Like how, how light is it? How strong is it? How direct and pinpointed is it? How indirect and global is it? How speeding up or slowing down is it? Or how free flow, like childlike is it? Or bound flow and contained? So these are like the, the ingredients of the soup. If, <laughs> if, the, if space is the pot that you're cooking the soup in, then the dynamics effort is the sort of ingredients. And then there's one more session, section called um, shape and shape and how we're shaping our bodies. And the shape idea is whether we are in our own relationships. So when we came in and did these exercises and we're very internal, that's, we call it a shape flow. We're in our own experience of micro movement, of 
like if I was like just sitting around picking my nose, I would be in shape flow. I'm in my own experience with my own body. I'm not relating to the world. If you see people standing online, queuing, they're usually in their own world, right? Now everybody would be on their phone. So maybe it starts to break just being in your own body world. But what's it like when you're not aware that you're in your body, you could be very aware that you're in your body doing things, or you could just be a person and the body's adjusting and doing its things. And we would still call that shape flow. The next level of shape is where we start to bridge to the world. We start to create a relationship. And in, in this particular scale, the way that we were moving through, we did that making these bridges out into space where we're either spoking out, like we're reaching out like a spoke in a wheel, or we're arcing we're arcing through space. So let's just play with that, like spoking where you're doing that central movement. It can go anywhere out and in or arcing where you're cutting a pathway through. Yeah. Peripheral movement. And there should be a central, there's like maybe a tension with your body that's counterbalancing whatever kind of movement. And already I see like once elbows and things and torso starts to get into it, we've gone to another layer and that's really shaping where our body is adapting to the environment. So these are just modes of adaptation. And one of them, the first one is I'm in myself. The second one is I'm building a bridge to the environment. And the bridge is probably something that's, I'm gonna use the word conservative, but I, I, I mean that in like a, I'm not gonna grab somebody I don't know and hug them. I'm gonna extend my hand and shake it up and down with them, most likely, depending on your culture. You may come in for a kiss, who knows, but, if I was going, if it was something I really knew, I would probably bring them right in, give them a big hug. And it's something that we're sort of missing in this lockdown for most people, that physical touch, physical shaping with other bodies where we really can be in. Have you been able to work during the, in Puerto Rico, Angel? Are you have do you see clients? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm able to see clients like six, seven months now. That, that's good. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Like our need for touch. And I have to say like a lot of times in my life, working with people on their bodies in, in more of a sort of somatic fitness way. So I'm like working with their bodies, but not just focusing on body work. Sometimes that's been like my main touch with people, you know, like it's not because we live in such a culture that isn't, isn't a very touchy culture. And certainly in the U S like the wrong touch can just be <laughs> disastrous for your career. So like how we touch, when it's appropriate to touch, what kind of touch do we do? And we don't really think about this. So let's come into another layer of, of touch. And so let's touch, just touch your hands together so you can just feel that you're touching. So it's the lightest possible touch. Tuning into that really light touch that's almost not touch, not, not even connected. And then bring your awareness into the sort of flow of energy between your hands. So is one pushing towards the other? Is, is there a receiver and a giver within that? Is it a complete balance? Is it shifting? Just tuning into whatever you sense slash feel, sense feel. Even just tuning into what do you feel there? Like, do you feel the pulsing of your pulse? Do you feel heat? Just tuning into whatever your sensation of touch is there or energy. And if you're having a hard time deciding who's doing what, just pull your hands a little further away from each other. And you might get more awareness on dominance and like what's, what's giving, what's receiving. And as you're in that exploration, just take a quick somatic snapshot into what's going on in the rest of your body as you explore that. What is your feeling of it? What is your interest? And what's going on with your nervous system? Are you going up? Are you going like, are you regulating up or are you regulating down? And then let's take that into, we're going to, we're going to work with our arms. So what I want you to do is just feel the skin of your arm. So really gentle feeling the skin of your arm, 
so that you're not really digging into anything. You're just sensing that touch. Maybe you feel the hair on the skin of your arm, really, really light. And then I want you to kind of tree frogs fingers your, your, and, and start to move your fascia a little bit. So your fingers are gonna become like little stickers and they're gonna move that top layer of skin and maybe superficial fascia. So those stickers, and you can feel, you're not really going into muscle. You, you can maybe feel the muscle underneath, but you're really moving the surface layer around and feeling what, what kind of touch does it take to stick on and get that? And then I want you to take it a layer deeper into where you're kind of moving so you can feel your fingers getting into the muscles and maybe moving through the muscles. Maybe you can feel sort of the internal casings and sets of different muscles that are there in your forearm, how they connect and sort of dig into that, feeling into that. Yeah, and you can put your arm down. It doesn't need to, I don't need to be able to see it. I'm just holding mine up so that you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, so you're in a comfortable position. And then the next layer, start to feel into your bone. If you get along this edge, you'll be able to find the ridge of your bone really easy. And then start to let your fingers move. Not that you're trying to hurt your bone or do anything to your bone, but just feel the bone with your fingers. So you can start to feel along the shape of the bone. Like there's that nice ridge along the edge of your It's your ulna. <laughs> I'm like radius ulna. I have to move them to figure out which is which. <laughs> Good, and relax and just shake it out. So just those layers of like how we touch, how we feel what's going on. Like, and this may be very familiar to you or it may be something new. Um, and I feel like it's that idea of beginner mind again, when we come to an, a, a thing there's so many different ways we can experience that thing and, and notice with ourselves like, oh, I've done this. I know what I'm doing or what am I doing or how is this? So it's something actually they're talking about in the course, this trolls of learning, like when you're learning something, what comes up and either helps you or hinders you as you're in the learning. But with that, let's forget the trolls for a minute because I think most of you are in the, yeah, let's see. Fleur just asked a question, Flower, just, just open up and ask it out loud. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused about what you meant Then, like somebody was sitting in like picking their nose and they were in a flow shape versus other types of shapes. I right. I'm not used to the vocabulary that way. So, I've yeah. to know more. So, the, so don't think of flow as, um, so the, so in the Laban language, the term is shape and, and in shape, we have shape, we have shape flow, we have directional shape, and then we have shaping and shape flow is when the organism is relating to itself. So it's not, it's not like I'm in a flow state, which is a different language. So this is just for Laban movement analysis language. It's, it's not the same as anything else, right? It's just that we're in. So I would say if I'm in an internal exploration, oh, I'm in shape flow. I'm just in my own experience of my own body and feeling what that is. And so that's like often when we come in for a landing, we're in a shape, we're in shape flow. But if I'm just in my own world, I'm doing my things, shape flow, relating just to myself. Um, anything that you guys noticed with the touch or anything else that we've done so far? I, it's just great to be reminded of all those layers. I feel like I haven't touched myself like that in a while, so it's really nice. It's funny how we have the resource of, of our own touch, right? But we're not, we're not trained to use it very much. And it is something that actually is a lot in the continuum work. Like you do a lot of sounding, you do a lot of touch, you do a lot of things. So you're feeling into yourself. So it's, again, I'm just gonna marry it one more time, this idea of shape flow where we're like, oh, here I'm in my space. I'm connecting to myself. I'm, so other parts of shape flow would be breath support, core support things that are happening inside your body. You know, I want to say life support, but I don't mean it in the, in the external way. I mean, like your energy flow, the, the, your, whatever's bubbling up or down within yourself, regulating up, regulating down. Those are, those are shape flow, self to self relationships. Anything else? Peen, Lindsay, Angel, Quentin, anything? Well, I, I'm, uh, the, all the facets uh, between the skin and the fascia underneath and then the 
I'm used to find acupuncture points and then you are really into measuring and then going, okay, where do I find uh, like a hole? Or, and this is a bit more different, like really feeling the, the quality, quality or of, of what you're feeling. So it's a completely different way. Although with finding points, you have also to find energy or, so it, it is, a, I try to find out what's happening, but <laughs> it's nice to, to, to touch myself. <laughs> Thank you. I usually go from skin into muscle and kind of like, and I do that transition pretty quick. So it was neat to spend a minute in fascia and just see, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to just step a little deeper with that because so uh, one of the experiences that, that I've had in my life was doing a cadaver dissection with Gil Headley. And I have to say like highly, highly recommend if you ever can do that or watch any of his stuff online. It's he's just amazing. His integration as a human and the way that he works with bodies is really it's, uh, I haven't seen it anywhere else. I'm sure other people are doing great stuff. And I have studied with Tom Myers online too, but not personally, like I have taken some of his online courses and I've studied with some of his people doing anatomy trained stuff. And it's a little bit more of a biomechanical version of the body as opposed to a biomorphic interrelated system, which I feel like is the way that like a dynamic living system that isn't separated into parts. And I feel like that's the way that Gil Headley does it. But also because my training early, early after studying movement analysis, and I, I talked about this last week, was in connective tissue therapy, which is a fascia massage. It's called Binda Gebebs massage. And it's really about pulling through the fascia in a way that affects the nervous system, really the autonomic nervous system, balancing out the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So then when I did this uh, in 2016, I think I did it. No something, 2015, something like that. I did this dissection with Gil Headley. And when I was there, so many people were like, oh, how many times have you done this before with him? And I was like, what? Once. And everyone's like, oh yeah, this is my fifth dissection. And I was like, I didn't understand why that was necessary until I spent the time with the body. Like each body is so different. And each time you go through learning, you're going to learn something totally different. But the way that he does the, he approaches the body is layer by layer. So you start dissecting the skin and you're working in teams. So there's a couple teams on each table. Then we had two, two, two cadavers and they were both older women. So first peeling away the whole skin. And then there's the superficial fascia, which is covering your whole body. And it's this layer that kind of looks like corn on the cob. It's like this fatty fascial layer, which is like, and because culturally for so many people, they have such a aversion to fat. It's, it can be a very triggering thing. I think he even said that when he started going through it, he was like, wait a minute, ah, took him a while to come down. For me, I was kind of in love with it immediately because I'm like, this is so fucking cool because this is what I've been studying. This is what I studied movement with and now seeing it and it's incredibly strong. And it's also incredible. I want, I want to say it's incredibly resonant because of the, the, well, I'm gonna say this in a couple of ways. The, the way that when we heat our body, the fat, the fat melts, right? Like when something's cold, it's gonna be a little harder. Like we can understand why when we get warmed up, we've moved something, it's easier to move. When we're kind of cold, there's a rigidity and numbness maybe because uh, cold, not gonna feel anything. But with that fascia, like nerve endings are moving out to the edge of our body. And, and the, the ideas behind Binda Gavet's massage was like, you are, as you're stroking through this stuff and you're kind of doing it around the shapes of the muscles underneath, there's a whole, like, it starts at your sacrum and moves out up your spine, around your pelvis, then down your legs. Like it, it has a way of moving around your rib cage. Um, and so what, the woman who developed this system, who was in Germany, I think it was like in the 1950s around the time that she developed it. And she was in the hospital and had gangrene in her, like her leg, she was going to have an operation. And she started pulling through the tissue around her sacrum and then got somebody else to do it. And she ended up healing herself and not, it wasn't like her whole leg was gangrenous, but something major. So she developed this system and, and was working with different people to, um, for different reasons, like kids that were wetting the bed, this different stuff. Like there was a lot of different stuff that helping balance out that fight, flight and rest, digest, soothe, settle response that's happening in the autonomic nervous system. So if we're in fight, flight, like we're not processing the stuff. And if we're too um, 
opposite, we're too in, nothing is happening, right? We're also getting stuck. It can go either direction. We need sort of a balance between activity and calming, healing, nourishing, resting. There's a lot of things I could say about this, but I don't want to talk the whole time. Um, but back to the superficial fascia. So all of that stuff is routed out. And the other thing is like sound vibration being in the world hits us through our skin into our fascia. Like that is our first layer. So this is what I'm saying. My experience is this is not a great teaching out there, but I think it kind of relates to continuum. And that is that like through our superficial fascia, that's how we're resonating with the world, right? So if I'm able to have some fluidity in there, if I'm able to have some freedom that's going out to the surface, to my surface layer, under the surface, under the skin. But the, the next layer of place between my, my actual uh, container, my, my boundary, and then the next layer underneath, like we feel vibration in there. We feel so much is happening in there. So just coming to a, a more loving kind relationship with that layer of being is incredibly helpful and healthful for our bodies. Now, if I was teaching embodiment. Uh, well, I'm just going to say, this is my teaching from what I experience of being in a body and how I have come to terms with living in the world. And I feel like that, that fascial layer, when we can really invite it into participation, it offers an incredible resource for diversity, for of, um, of movement and also sort of diversity of capacity to be in the world, diversity of capacity for relationship, to take other people in, to feel what we're feeling and to go, oh, I'm sensing something. Where am I sensing that thing? Because there's the gut sensing, there's the heart sensing, there's the mind sensing. But I want to say there's also this, this more closer to the surface whole body sensing that can come into that layer of superficial fascia. Way too much information. So just put that in your pipes and smoke it. <laughs> and um let's go back to <laughs> thanks Quentin so let's let's just go back to your experience again what did you notice what happened when you got to bone did anything come up and Angel you work on bodies so what do you, what how, how about for you um for me yeah it, it's the language is it's known to me and I um I had a question that you kind of answered it already about how can all of this like work with authenticity and definitely that first layer, you know, getting more in touch with it. I, I do a lot of cranial sacral therapy. That's, that's the layer that I work mostly. Um, so, but actually not so much in myself. So it will take it kind of as a practice too, you know, just to experience that more. Definitely. Because yeah. I go about into... Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. And with with the bone, with the myofascial work that I do is mostly a lot of the focus is on the bone. So it's um interesting also, you know, out of how important that, that layer is it's also in the body, how much information it carries too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I feel like the resonant, like that, that external resonance, like about, and talking about authentic, authenticity is like, well, we could say, how does it feel in your skin, right? How does it feel like, you know, when you get the chills or something, it's like, oh, it's that layer on the outside getting excited, right? But that's also, where is that coming from? Is it coming from the surface? Is it coming from right underneath? So let's like marry those a little bit. All right. What time are we at? Because I need to end kind of on time. Um, let's, let's play with the planes. So we did the, with the dimensions, the single dimensions. And again, for, uh, Fleur and Angel, don't worry about being able to remember any of this. Like we're putting in a scaffolding and it doesn't matter if it lands in your head, if it lands in your body at all, that's all, that's all you need. And there can be layering. And also all of these are recorded. You can look back over things that we've done over, over time. Um, and, and it tends to weave its way through things. Like we tend to stick on one idea a little bit for a few weeks and then kind of move to another idea. But I wanna play with the planes. So, um, so if, <laughs> this is gonna be my really rude version, rudimentary version. If this is a dimension, <laughs> vertical, horizontal, sagittal, then here's the plane, vertical, 
horizontal sagittal, just to give you the, the more <laughs> the visual aid. So in the planes, like if I'm moving in the planes, I'm going to go to these four points. This is the vertical plane, right high, left high, whoa, right low. Go, Lindsay, I see you going off center, left low. <laughs> right high, left high, right low, left low. Right high, left high, right low, left low, right high left high right low left low and if it feels okay take your eyes so you're looking at that corner the next corner and then down and down so you get your eyes going right high left high right low left low so right now we're splitting the plane up between both sides of our bodies but let's do it all with just the right side and we'll hit we'll hit the points going around the circle so we'll go right high we're going to cross arm and leg left high, right low, left low, right high, left high, right low, left low. Same thing on the other side, left high, trying to keep your hips pointing toward the screen, right high, right low, left low. And the second hand can work as a counterbalance, left high, right high, right low, left low. One more time. Left high, right high, left, uh, right low, left low. So I could move it around like that, or I could go through. So I could go, and I just want to say, I'm saying the opposite of what I'm actually doing. So if I mess it up, I apologize. <laughs> it happens all the time. So I'm going to go to high right, and then I'm going to cross down to low left. High right, to low left, crossing low, that's it. High right, and I'm gonna bend my knees and take my butt down too, if possible. To left low, high right, to left low. Then I'm gonna switch it to the other side. High left, to right low. So here, I'm open on the top, open, and then I'm crossing on the bottom, to so left low. High right, left low, high right, left low. So that's my vertical vertical plane. I can hit those points in any different ways. Let's cross on top and open to the bottom. So we're going to go high right to left low. Crossing and opening. Crossing and opening. And I'm going to cross both my arms and my legs. Cross and open. And then change it to the other side. Crossing up high and then opening down low. Crossing up high and then opening down low. And you can go onto your tippy toes or not. Crossing and opening. And one more. Crossing and opening. Good, just shake it out. So that was a whole lot of vertical plane. Vertical plane is very much about the relationship to me. So vertical dimension could be very much like it's just me to me. But once I go here, I'm starting to reach out so that you can see me. So <laughs> it's like, I'm right here. So there's like this vertical dimensional relationship. Like you can see me, I'm over here. Whereas this might just be like more internal me. Still draws your attention in maybe, but maybe not as much as this, depending on your focus and what we're trying to do. So that was the vertical dimension. It's the vertical, oh, sorry, vertical dimension to vertical plane, right? Vertical dimension, place high, place low to vertical plane, just opening it out. So let's go to the horizontal. Our horizontal dimension is just side side. We add a little bit of front back and we have the vertical plane. So, we have the horizontal plane. So, but I, I wanted to say that the vertical plane is like the door plane. It's like you're in a doorway touching the four corners of the doorway. The table, the horizontal is like the table plane. And it's like you're in a big uh, table, like a big rectangular table and the heads are at the two ends. So the dominant spatial pull is horizontal and the secondary spatial pull is sagittal forward backward. So we're gonna have, I'm gonna turn around to do this with you. We're gonna hit the four points. We're gonna go right forward middle, left forward middle, right back middle, left back middle right forward middle, 
left forward middle, right back middle, left back middle, right forward middle, left forward middle, right back middle, left back middle, one more time, right forward middle, left forward middle, right back middle, left back middle. It has a sort of skating quality, right, as we're moving through. Um, yeah, <laughs> the Canadian knows how to do it. <laughs> So let's um, now let's cross and open that. So I'm going to do it facing the sun. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to be open to right forward middle and then I'm going to cross to left back middle. Opening right forward middle, crossing back, left back middle. If I wanted to be like super dancerly, I could pick up my legs and give it a little kick in each direction. Very modern moment, 1970s modern dance. And let's try it with the other side. Left forward middle, crossing back to right back middle. Left forward middle. So the hips are trying to point front. You're going to get a spiral in your spine. Left forward middle, right back middle. Left forward middle, right back middle. And we could also do these where we are, let's see, open to the front, cross to the back, or cross to the front, open to the back. So all of these possibilities exist. And let's do the sagittal. So our sagittal dimension is forward backward. If we add some up down, some vertical, we have the wheel plane. So if we imagine these like rectangles, I'm gonna just do it with one side of my body. So I'm gonna go forward high, forward low, backward low, backward high, forward high, forward low, Backward low, backward high. Yeah, so just one side of the body doing the whole thing. Forward high, forward low. It's a big arm circle. Backward low, backward high. Last one. Forward high, forward low, backward low, backward high. Switch it to the other side. It's still the same space. Forward high, just even out your body. Forward low, backward low, backward high. So this is kind of like a throw. If I was throwing a ball overhand, the top of that would be like a throw. If I were to take this in the other direction, let's just turn it around on this one, taking it back, back high, back low, forward low, forward high. It's kind of like bowling, back high, back low, forward low, forward high. Cool. So there, the, the, if I took those, this is my little visual thing. Here are the planes. Here's the vertical plane. Here's the horizontal plane, and here's the sagittal plane. So here's my sagittal, vertical, horizontal. If I take this thing, this is the three planes put together, and I took the endpoints of each of those, I would have this, the icosahedron. So there are scales of movement that we worked on last week, actually, part of one, that go on the icosahedron. So here are, like if I put my hand up inside of it, this point, this point, this point, and this point. And this is kind of conceptual and confusing, <laughs> but don't worry, you don't need to know it. It's just an idea to think about. This is the vertical plane. If I put my hand in this way, this is the horizontal plane. If I put my hand in this way, this is the sagittal plane. So my sagittal is like that. Horizontal, I'm gonna tip it. And this would be, if <laughs> this is fun, this, I made this one day. If I took this, these planes, they could go inside this. So I'll show you how that would be. Where is my piece of paper? This should work. It'll almost work. It's gonna not quite work, but it'll, it'll work close enough. So if I shove it in there, there's my, there's my vertical plane inside hitting the four points. Here's my horizontal plane, and here's my sagittal plane. So that's just how you can imagine that. And these, um, and why does this even matter? Like, so once we get into the more, like that, the scale that goes in that is gonna move from one form to another, from one plane to another. So it would start in the vertical, move into the sagittal, and then take it to the horizontal. And just out of curiosity, so what I wanna do, is I'm gonna move part of the scale for you and you're just gonna watch it. And then if you can just name back what popped out to you, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I saw all this stuff. Just if one or two things become clear, 
just what pops out. So I'll just do the scale for you. So this is called the A scale. And this is moving from one, one plane to another. So I'm starting and I'm gonna name it in my, what my right and left are. Am I gonna do that? Yes, I am. So I'm gonna start in my right. I'm gonna have high right, vertical plane, back low, sagittal plane, left forward middle, horizontal plane, low right, vertical plane, back high, sagittal plane, right forward middle, horizontal plane, low left, vertical plane, forward high, sagittal plane, right back middle, horizontal plane, last set, high left, vertical plane, forward low, sagittal plane, left back middle, back to high right. It's so challenging because I keep doing my other hand and I'm already completely like challenged on right and left. So what did you see? What happens? What would be the possible value of doing a scale like that? What things are going on in my body? What things are going on? What, what, what do you think? Yeah, I see spiraling or making a, or the start of a spiral and then go. What else? like so many possibilities I'm sorry right go ahead Angel and then Lindsay yeah, afterwards like so many like possibilities and I think of biota integrity how that can fit you know in in not just the whole body but you know in the shoulder in the hip in our neck you know like Exactly. I'm amazed right now. Yeah, it, exactly. It's and that's it. Ding ding ding. Like the most important thing is biotensegrity. And that's that's the and that's that internal relationship of the fascia, the nervous system, everything working together in this way that's doing this. Right? It is what craniosacral is about, right? It's about that breath inside the body that can create huge changes or very subtle changes that just shift the capacity for being. So I feel like when we start to really inhabit this whole structure in different ways, it's like suddenly we have much more access to being human in a body. It's like our systems are starting to go, oh, there's a communication pattern happening here, like through the corpus callosum, through our brain, especially when we're working with crossed patterning and open and shifting. So we've got those three dimensions of forward, backward, side, side, up, down, and now we're moving from one to another. What else did you notice? Lindsay, I started talking. I took over your talking time. <laughs> just, a, just a lot of opening and closing in different planes in at different levels. Quentin, you're unmuted. Do you have anything to say? Uh, <clears throat> for some particular reason uh, today, <laughs> and I, I didn't think about it before, but I thought about robotics. And I thought about um, how still they haven't been able to completely um, figure out how to make human being to make artificial, um, whether whether it's in uh, something like a television show or if it's actually physical robotics to make something look exactly human in its movements and all the sort of mechanical <laughs> aspects of it. It would seem like it would make sense because there's so much math in it. But it, it's not easy to find that. And the other thing is, um, when I when I saw you moving, um, it's it's probably happened before. But when I saw you moving after I stopped and took a little bit of a break, um, I felt like my body was still moving. So it, um, I know I you know I've read about mirror neurons, but it was it was very apparent to me <laughs> that when I focused on you moving, that parts of my body felt like they were moving at the same time while I was still. And um, it would be interesting to try this with uh, nonviolent communication to see if this kind of movement can actually open up spaces where people feel like they can be in their own shape flow. You know, there's some relationship to me that's a little bit more clear with what Paul Linden does. Um, this makes what he says a lot more clear to me. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. And, and yes, like, I want to just name this thing that, so when I was studying movement analysis, I was a bartender at the same time. And I think I may have told this story in this class before, but probably you guys, certainly not all of you were there. So I was bartending and I was watching a, a couple, a, a guy and a girl fight at the bar. 
And it wasn't like, obviously it wasn't like a, they weren't physically touching, but the fight was in their bodies. Like, and what was happening is he was very centrally moving into her space and she kept like backing away and being all around the outside. So it's like in a movement, like from a movement analysis perspective, she's in this light and indirect place and he's spoking into her with this strength. And it was like, there's no way to meet. You're, 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 you know, you can't meet there. Like it's, we were asking this question last week about, you know, directly facing somebody and how confrontational that can be. Like, and, and I, I had this experience growing up, like sitting at the table with anybody, like usually a male, my dad, my brother, my boyfriend, somebody facing me and being be like, well, what are you going to do with your life? And I'm just like, oh, oh, I, don't, I don't know. But if they were sitting beside me, we're sitting in the car, we're driving along. We're in this horizontal relationship, not this sagittal face to face, but horizontal next to each other. Oh, my friend, how are we going to look at the big picture together? Right. It's a very different relationship. So, you know, it's so much less confrontational. So this could be confrontation. It could also be deep intimacy. Right. And there's and the fine line between intimacy and confrontation are, you know, we're going to meet on a very deep level. And will it can we let each other into that space between us? Like it's a lot, you know, it takes it's going to require a lot that certainly isn't part of our culture these days to be close to people, to be intimate in that face to face way. I'm going to name one more thing. I studied uh, Meisner acting technique in my 20s for like two years. I did the whole program. And in that program, you look, you know, directly at another person and it starts off with something very basic. You're wearing a blue shirt. I'm wearing a blue shirt. You just go back and forth. And then it starts to peel away the layers into, wow, I feel attracted to you or I feel uh, weird or I feel sad or something's coming up. And you start to name as quickly as possible everything that's happening in the actual moment. So I feel like for me, that was one peeling back the layers of what's the truth of my of this moment in my body so that was like really but it's not something that we spend too much time with so i feel like all of this space stuff is a way of accessing different ways to approach each other like if i come around into something if i come straight forward into something if i back away from something if i take something up if i take something down like all we use the words all the time to describe experience but because our culture is so descartesian split body mind it's like now we're bringing it back together right this work is bringing that stuff back together that was a big long blah 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 anything else to say on hell i i like that the cardian split <laughs> It is right. It's not just Descartes. It's also most of our religions that have this body, this, you know, well, these are two separate things. They don't, you know, they don't, there's no meeting, but, but the Cartesian thing, like, I think therefore I am. And like that, that means it's all happening here. Yeah. All right, Lindsay, nice to see you take off. Yeah. Some people have to, oh my God, we're over time. I'm totally over time. Well, <laughs> I didn't even, I thought last time I looked, we had 15 minutes still. So I'm going to end it with that, but I want to just take a couple breaths together. So let's do hands on chest, hands on belly and gratitude for you guys for being here. Um, and for yeah, showing up for yourself, for each other, for us, feel free to reach out if you have questions about anything. And I will put, uh, post this up on Laura Victoria Ward. And if you want to look back on YouTube to any of those, you can, ah, breathing in, feeling in, Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Super nice to be with you in the learning world of space. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Gracias. Thanks for coming. Uh, De nada. <laughs>